she's back. Turns out I have more shit I want to do. And I am now working with natural light as well as my desk LED kind of thing. Um, so if I get more white balance fucking up my life, I'm going to be pissed. Very upset. And I'm going to file for a lawsuit. The plan today is natural glam. Ooh, shit. Yeah, we ready. As naturally glamorous as I am currently, we want to elevate this. We want to be elevated to the nth degree. Good for like a wedding, just wanting to feel cute and fun and fresh. But I'm gonna do my eyebrows off camera and also my face off camera once we get to that point. So I'll be right back with this done. Life happens sometimes. Sometimes you have good brow days and sometimes you have very bad brow days. I don't know what happened um, with this situation. I'm not a fan of it personally. I think it's ugly, but if I spend any longer on them, I'm gonna wanna fucking kill myself. So we're gonna move on. Now, with the eyeshadows, we're gonna use more coastal scents. Last time I used my big palette that had all my colorful ones. Now we're gonna use my small one <laughs> that has been belovedly used frequently. <laughs> this is my everyday palette whenever I want to like make a look that is like wearable and very pretty. Um, there's two different tones that you can go for if you don't know this about makeup. There's cool tones and then there's warm tones. Cool tones are like this middle row right here. They're all pretty cool in undertone. Warm undertones are like this one where they're a little bit warmer, obviously. I don't know, is there a better way to describe that other than they're warmer? So for me personally, what I'm wearing today is obviously warm. So um, I'm probably gonna go with the warm tones um, rather than the cool tones. Plus, I just personally think that I like warm tones better. But I mean, like, it's also a seasonal thing. If you're like, it's summer and you wanna like have some warm tones on your eye, like cute. And then if it's like colder outside, you're gonna want some cool tones so then you don't look like I don't know, a Thanksgiving feast on your eye or some shit. I don't know. But also, I think the whole seasonal thing is dumb as fuck. Like, wear whatever colors you want all year round. I don't give a shit. With that being said, just consider that before you start constructing a look. Or don't give a shit about it. I don't know. <laughs> some people give a shit about it, so that's why I mentioned it. I don't tend to. First things first. Big blendy brush. <laughs> also, in my last video, I put in my description that you could easily turn that video into a drinking game if you had the correct rules for it. This video is gonna be the same, probably. I tend to repeat myself a lot and um, have fun having a drinking game to it. <laughs> Get yourself a big blendy brush. Um, I like this one a lot. It's got a lot of color in it. you're also going to need, just like last time, is a um, precise blending brush. You can get, like this one's from e.l.f. You can get these both super cheap at the drugstore. The main difference between doing like a wearable eyeshadow look versus like super colorful ones is that you just want it to be super blended. It's not necessarily that you want a lot of color payoff, even though you may want that. You want it to be super seamless and that is kind of like the benchmark that we're trying to hit here. What beauty gurus like to say is you like to go in with a transition color. A transition color is essentially just something that all the other colors can blend into, make it super seamless and pretty. So for me, we're not gonna go into the yellow today because yellow can make, it's beautiful. I love yellow eyeshadow so much, but that's not the kind of look that we're going for today, I don't think. So we're gonna start with this color right here. Rather than sort of like last time, I sort of like pet it like that. You're just gonna dab in like this. You don't want to make it too aggressive. You don't want too much eyeshadow to fall. But you do want it to be like pretty concentrated but not too much. And then this is the important part. Hit off your brush. You can blow on it if you want to but if you ever plan on doing other people's makeup in the future just get into the habit of hitting off your brush instead because if you blow on it it's pretty unsanitary. So we're gonna go in this crease. You could do this so messily if you want. Windshield wiper motions, kids. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm. Concentrate it in areas that I maybe want more pigment. 
So right over here, I tend to blow it out a little bit more. This is called the outer V when you do it right here and then into your crease. I'll show you, I'll show you. So like right here, onto the lid and then into the crease. I want this to be super concentrated. You can take this up as far as you want to just cause this is gonna be the main color in the crease. So bring it as far in as you want, fam. Oh, that's so pretty. I'm really adding a lot right here because um, the colors that we're gonna add to it are going to start focusing specifically out in this outer corner. I know for me personally, um, I think this is sort of just like an eye thing, depending on like how much skin you have on your eye. Um, some people have eyes that like have more wrinkles in them and tend to catch product a little bit more. Um, I definitely have eyes that have that problem where when I'm blending, sometimes my eye gets sort of caught like that and it can make it kind of patchy. In that case, if you're experiencing like patchiness that you want to like blend through, Go to that spot specifically and just circular motion it. You might start losing pigment there, but that's probably a good thing if there's patching going on. And it'll tend to smooth out the whole area if you're just being patient enough. And then once it's done patching, like I think I fixed that problem, um, you can go in with more product and then build it up from there. I remember always thinking that my eye shape was super weird because it always did that. And I feel like not a lot of people have that issue, but you just gotta... Get to know your eye shape, get to know yourself on a deep, deep emotional level. What do we want? Seamless blend. When do we want it? In due time, because blending takes for fucking ever. <laughs> so now I'm gonna move on to the next color. This one, right here. I've, as you can see, similar colors, just a little bit darker. And we're gonna start taking it on the little precise blending brush and we're gonna start focusing this a little bit lower I guess <laughs> specifically right in this outer corner it's super flattering I'm kind of patting this on then we're gonna start blending it though you do not want to take this color too far up from here on out you're gonna want to be very specific about where you're placing things because if you put this too high up, then it's just going to cover up your transition color and you don't want that. Maybe you do, and that's cool, but like, for the sake of this look, this is not what we want. This one I'm going to take basically all the way across the eye, but keeping it really close to that crease. We're not going to blend it up too much. I'm going to keep it nice and concentrated right here. It's just a really easy way of making your eyeshadow look so much more complex and so much better is if you have a brush like this. It does half the work for you, really. You can see the difference. Like, obviously the side is pretty, but this side is definitely we're having a little bit more of a moment with. <laughs> Pro tip. Um, a lot of people have a hard time finding where their crease is. I know it kind of seems like a silly thing because you're like, it's where the crease of your eye is, duh. The most flattering thing for you to do is find where your crease is. So like you can see for me, it's like right there. And you want to put color just above it. It, ma it makes your eyes look bigger. People can see your eyeshadow be better if you do that. Um, it takes a little bit of practice to get used to putting it there instead of just like directly in like that. But once you start learning to bring it up like that, um, it's really easy, it becomes second nature. Now, you could totally just keep it like this, and it's totally pretty, and it's cute and fun and fresh, but I am gonna show you um, an extra little thing. If you wanted to add it on, if you're looking for some deep and drama, may I introduce to you dark brown eyeshadow, which is the best thing, okay? Like, black eyeshadow, very scary, very intimidating, and doesn't always look good on all people. Dark brown eyeshadow, looks good on everyone. Every single person in this world looks good in dark brown eyeshadow. Do you have brown eyes and you think that your eye color is super boring? No, bitch. Dark brown's gonna fucking warm that shit up and make your eye, sh eye color more beautiful than it already is. Do you have blue eyes? It's gonna look flattering on you. Green eyes? Flattering on you. Are you a vampire and have like red eyes or some shit? 
this is gonna make you look so pretty. I'm really trying to sell dark brown eyeshadow. It's dark brown eyeshadow. I'm sure you guys have used it before. You do not want a lot of dark brown eyeshadow though. Work with her in increments, okay? She's willing to work with you if you take her a little bit of a time. We're gonna specifically put this just in the outer corner. It's going to smoke it out a little bit, make your eyes look super like snatched up. Again, just sort of placing this right in the outer corner and sort of doing this motion to concentrate it there. You can sort of start like itching it like that. You don't want to like full like put all your pressure on the brush and like swipe it. It's just going to be way too muddy. Just be super gentle and start blending it in there. Don't take it too far in like I mentioned. We really want to just keep this on the outer corner. Like fuck. Why is dark brown eyeshadow the best thing? No, I lied. Yellow eyeshadow is the best thing, but like dark brown is like up there. But I also love orange eyeshadow. Okay, I gotta stop. <laughs> Oh God, fuck, I love it. So a couple things you wanna do at this point. You're gonna to wanna to retouch up the transition color in the crease. I'm gonna use the small brush for this. So we're gonna just go right on top, super gently, start blending the rest of this stuff out. If your shit's already fully blended, you don't need to worry about this, but I tend to like to just add a little bit of this on top, just to make sure. We're gonna go in with that medium brown, sort of pet it on there like I did with like the colorful eyeshadow look. And we're gonna stamp this in right next to it. Cause we kinda want an ombre effect on the lid too. You don't need to do this by any means. I think it just really, like the lid can have a really huge disconnect from the crease. It, I feel like if you don't do this, see what I mean? Like now I feel like we're apart we're part of the same world, you know? <laughs> and then I'm gonna go in with that first transition color on the same brush and do that too. It's okay if this ends up getting covered up by your um, by your lid shade because uh, the thought is what counts, you know? Ooh, yes, I subscribe to this a lot. If I'm gonna be honest, here is usually where I end because I'm not a huge fan personally of putting shimmer shades on top of this. I'm more into a full matte look than I am with any sort of shimmer on the lid when I'm doing natural. However, I know that plenty of people out there love doing this, so I am going to do it. Um, plus, I think it looks really, really good in photography if you add a shimmer shade on your lid. So if you're gonna like go to prom or something, or you're like getting your pictures taken at like some kind of wedding, um, this is cute. It's a cute thing to do. However, if I'm just like going to the mall. So I have a couple of different options of shimmer. Um, this one's the warmest one. Um, this one's definitely cool tone, definitely not for this look. And then this one's a little bit more neutrally. I think we're gonna go with the straight up warm one. I like this one. You don't need to be super precise with this, but I will say try not to get into your crease too much. There's nothing that hurts me more than seeing shimmer in the crease. It physically hurts me. I don't know how to react whenever I see it. I tend to just act in violence and I know that that's not healthy, but it just tends to be my first reaction and I'm working on it, but like, ugh, you know? <laughs> I might actually be cheatsy. I think I'm gonna be cheatsy. If you wanna be cheatsy, <laughs> setting spray. Set this shit. It'll make it easier to work with and also make it so it's, it doesn't transfer into your lid as much. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you not like the spray, baby? When it's sort of wet, you can basically paint it on. So I'm sort of like hugging where my crease is like this and then I'm gonna sort of just draw a line like that. Some people might say it's cutting the lid and who knows, maybe it is. Don't do that technique unless you're wetting your brush or else you're gonna get all kinds of shadow in your crease when you do that. And now that I sort of have like that line created, I'm just gonna go in straight um, 
without wetting my brush at all. If you want more intensity, go ahead and go in with the setting spray again. Now when you're sort of getting to the spot where you had like your transition color on your lid, go ahead and just start patting it at that point. Because it'll blend it just by doing that. And you just don't want to take your lid shade all the way across your eye. It's one of like my least favorite looks, honestly. And I used to do it all the time when I first started makeup is that I'm like, oh, yes, the lid shade goes on the entire lid. It's just not flattering, I don't think at all. It's something that I did a lot and I hate looking back at old pictures and whenever I see that, I'm just like, ew. Okay, let's do the other eye. If you've never wet your eyeshadows before, you definitely don't want to over dampen your brush or else if you go back into your pan, you might end up ruining it. Just like a couple sprays will do you just fine. And also if you're worried about ruining your eyeshadows with this, just sort of like work into your eyeshadow that you currently have on your eye until this is a little bit less wet. Okay, with that, we're done with the upper, upper lid. I'm gonna do some eyeliner and some lashes. Oh, what good fun that was. <laughs> lower eyeshadow on the lower lash line. Going back in with my trusty pencil brush that is actually a paintbrush. I don't know what I'm gonna do when this takes a shit on me. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and buy an actual pencil brush, but like, it'll be a sad day. A sad day in life. Like getting rid of the first palette I ever bought, going through my first thing of setting spray. We're gonna start real easy Real, real Izzy <laughs> with the transition color that I first use in my crease. And we're just gonna put this everywhere. Just smudging this on the lower lash line. Try not to bring it too far down. Not trying to make it too smoky. My favorite thing about this lighting is how heavy it makes my lashes look. <laughs> I have some rogue glue in my lower lashes. <laughs> I was off camera and my lashes got stuck down there. I had to tear them apart and then I tried to get it out but it was like so sticky that I like pulled my entire eye and I was just like sitting over here like don't cry. Don't cry, you got this Allie, you can do this. <laughs> now we're just gonna go in with the medium brown. Again, you can make this more complex if you want to but like I'm not here for it. We're really just making it an ombre on the bottom. This is gonna go about halfway. And if you're good with like waterline stuff, like stuff in this part of your waterline, you could totally pop in like a brown liner, even a black one if you're feeling adventurous. Side note, I love wearing lashes, do not get me wrong, okay? I feel like a total cunt in them <laughs> in the best way possible. However, nothing emphasizes the fact that my eyes go in two separate directions more than lashes. <laughs> like I feel like I can get away with it just fine in like normal life and no one can notice. Oh, my nose is running. <laughs> As soon as I put on lashes, there's just no avoiding it. Like, it's right there. We see you. If y'all thought for a second that I didn't know, I fucking know. I'm fucking aware of it. Now we're going into the dark brown, and you guys will now see the magic of the dark brown. If you were not a believer when we were on the upper lid, you need to be a believer on the lower lid. You just want to keep this super concentrated just in the outer corner and really smudge this out. You don't want this to go very far in at all. I wish the lighting wasn't so shitty so you guys can actually like see the magic of that whole thing. Maybe I should just put more on. <laughs> I'm probably gonna, I definitely did too much. <laughs> I just wanted you guys to see it and I ended up going too hard. Yeah, we're gonna go in with that transition color right underneath that dark brown that we just did not too far but you just want to go right on top of it and just sort of blend it out my nose is still running oh i feel so pretty and delicate what the fuck okay mascara y'all know how to put on mascara i hope do you need do you guys need a mascara tutorial <laughs> Exposed. 
It's happening now at the end of the video. It's designed to be overexposed. Bitch, you better fucking not. Oh, no, no, no. These are giant lashes for a look that's supposed to be natural. I didn't want to put on the Violet Voss ones, the ones that I had in the last video. So I uh, was like, oh, I'll just like put on these ones. And then I forgot how truly large they are. Oops. <laughs> Let's just do the beauty shots, you know? Maybe in some like better angles and better lighting so then it doesn't seem like I'm sad looking. better <laughs> if you were to see the setup that I have to have my fucking camera where it is I would be roasted <laughs> you know this is good this is totally fine I just felt the period shift out of me <laughs> okay so um yeah <laughs> you're welcome you know if you guys liked it sick if you guys didn't like it sick if you guys want to subscribe sick cool Sounds good to me. <laughs> Let me know what else you guys want to see right now. Obviously, I'm just like on this makeup kick. Don't ask for a hair tutorial because this is what I'm capable of and no one should want to aspire to look like this. <laughs> My aesthetic is like overly done in the face and then underly done everywhere else. And not everyone can achieve this look and that's why I'm like a fucking original. <laughs> Let me know. I'm cool to do anything, any kind of rants, any kind of discussions, want me to talk about shit. I'm down. I'm cool with it. Am I a story time channel now? Sure. What do you guys want story times about? I don't fucking know. What tags do you guys want? <laughs> Let's go back to 2013 YouTube. I'll collab. No, sh I forgot. I can't collab. Because of COVID ruining my YouTube career. <laughs> anyway, so um, I don't have an outro. Bye. <laughs>